Okay, so today we're going to have a little look at installing the VATSIM client into Xplane. So we're going to be looking at the Xpilot client. I think it's kind of the smallest and most straightforward of the X of the Xplane clients. There are other ones like Swift, but they're much more complicated. So we're going to look at um, Xpilot. Anyway, so if you've never seen VATSIM before, it provides a virtual air traffic control system that integrates into the major simulators and as well as being able to hear the other air, the other pilots and air traffic control, you can also see their aircraft within the simulator if you configure it correctly to do so. So first thing you'll need to do if you're not a member of VATSIM is go and join. So you can go to VATSIM.net and click join here and it will walk you through doing so. And once you've got your account all sorted out, you will need to go and download the Xpilot client. So if you go to xpilot-project.org in a web browser, you can download the latest version and it downloads an installer. Now the installer will, in, will install the client software and it will also install a plugin into Xplane itself. So if we go and have a quick look inside Xplane, we've got a, a Cessna sat here on the ground at Heathrow in one in a corner of the airfield ready for us to have a look in a minute. If we look in plugins, you will find you have Xpilot suddenly there and you have some settings in it. Now there's an important extra piece to this that we need to do there's a th in the settings for xpilot there is csl configuration and you can see i've pointed at a particular path on my system and you can see i've got xplane installed as part of steam so i've got a, a load of path in front of it but the important thing is what's down the end of here the within the plugins folder of so resources plugins xpilot resources csl bluebell this is important we're going to go and have a look at exactly what's going on here. So I had to go and download. Xpilot does not come with the models for the aircraft to use within the simulator, and it won't use the ones that are in the simulator, if that makes sense. So what you need to do is head to xplane.org and do a search for Bluebell. If we just wait for that to come back. And you will find a package here called the obj8 csl packages so if we go and have a look at that you can see a million people have downloaded this if we go to download the file you will see a number of zip files and i would urge you to download each one individually don't just stack them all up so wait for each one to download otherwise the website might start um, cancelling your downloads so you end up with uh let's have a look in my downloads folder so i've got some downloads here once you've unzipped each of those packages you get a folder full of data for the various aircraft so where you have to put that if you look at your xplane 11 folder which i've got over here on the right so i've, I've navigated into where xplane is installed if i look inside resources and look inside plugins and then look inside um, xpilot and then there's a resources subfolder inside the xpilot plugin folder and there's a csl folder if there isn't one you can make one i think it's there by default so then you need to make a folder called bluebell inside it i think you can make any folder structure you like to be honest and the the um we'll see how this relates to the plugin in a moment and then i've basically copied everything that i unzipped from the csl packages into here i've just dragged it across and copied them in so then back within the simulator, if you remember, if I just go back out of here and come back in, so in plugins and go to Xpilot and settings, in the CSL configuration panel of the plugin, we can set the path for the CSL models. So I have gone into browse and I've located that, that blue CSL bluebell folder. So in my case, it's program file, steam, steam apps, common explain. And then within Xplane, Resources, Plugins, Xpilot, Resources, CSL, Bluebell. And you can browse to do that visually. So what that means is, once you've done it, if we go and run the Xpilot client in Windows, just wait for it to start, and here it comes. So it tells you it's connected Xpilot to Xplane. We've still not connected to the network yet. So we'll say connect and will tell us details about ourselves and we can say connect connecting to voice server 
and suddenly you should see the centers appearing so we've got egll northern approach egll tower so we can right click on that and at the moment it's not going to do anything because we've got no power in our airplane because we could get it to tune the com frequency for us so first things first then let's go in our airplane and turn on the master switches turn on the avionics that's all we need for the moment just to get the radios working basically and now we are going to we're not even going to bother turning the engine we're just going to use batteries for this example just quickly so you can see you've got the radios over here which you could tune yourself normally but the trick we can do here is if we tab across to get the xpilot client which if you've got multiple screens obviously you can leave this open or there's a setting to get it to stay in front um, we can say we want to go to tower tune the com1 frequency so that's happened so we give it a few moments if we have a look around while that's going on we can see if we go back to our web browser if we go and look we've got two ways of doing this in the web browser we can go to map.vatsim.net and you can scroll down or zoom in on the map with your scroll wheel on your mouse and you can see that any planes that are around so you can see at the moment there's only actually things on the ground so here we go you can hear some communications going on it's obviously a long way away whoever that is so let's get our ex-pilot client did I? No, I still got you as Tomjet 580. Let's go for the South Tower. Request. So I actually tuned the wrong frequency, didn't I? So we want 118.5, which is done. You can see it over there. I think we went and we went to um, Gatwick Tower, which is 20 miles away. So obviously it's going to be or 10 miles away. So obviously the radio is not going to be as clear. So we are actually should we go for the ground at Heathrow because we'll because there was a lot of planes on the ground wasn't there so we'll tune com one to ground at Heathrow. Now in X plane the the other result is we can see when we look on the control tower view. Katari, I take six seven request taxi. We can see the various planes moving around, and you can see they've all been injected with the planes from the CSL package so they are the absolutely correct hey, sorry, six, seven, uh, not only the model C shape Sierra, but the Sierra, paint one. as well Sierra, Sierra one, one, uh, Katari, eight, eight, six, seven. it's rather clever isn't good it good afternoon uh, Graham this is uh, Katari 1189 requesting radio check Katari 1189 Heathrow good morning Bridgefield 5 roger thank you Katari 1189 that's Qatari 1189's over there, look. If we were to zoom in, we will see him. But he's obviously behind those buildings. BAW79, contact Heathrow Tower. So one of the things about VATSIM is you don't actually have to use voice communication. You can type if you want to, and they won't discriminate against you for that. So it's not everybody has you know, all the kit, and not everybody's very confident to talk on the radio. Again, it's one of those things, as you get more practiced at it, you will get more relaxed about just opening the microphone and talking. And if you say you're new or you've not done it before, they will help you enormously. Someone's actually slewing their aeroplane, which is a bit naughty. Or maybe they've st stopped and started and moved their gate. And that was the, the, the ex-pilot client moving the aircraft smoothly. So you can see BAW79 over here. It's taxiing out. Or Speedbird 7979 seven, even. Uh, so yeah, you can see straight away how it works. You tune the radio, it works like a proper radio. But obviously you've got real controllers. So that's the X-Pilot client. And you can, again, you, if you go into settings for the client, you can do things like keep the window visible. So we could just make it small, for example scroll to the bottom of this so it will scroll automatically and we could leave it down there oh he says famous last words obviously it doesn't like playing nicely with x-plane itself oh, 
is all stations. Heathrow ground is now closing. Now continue with Heathrow Tower, 118.5. That's Heathrow Tower, 118.5. So Heathrow they're t telling us we have to go to Tower. So we all tune com frequency to Heathrow Tower. So you get the idea. These planes are not AI aircraft. These are real people playing the game elsewhere on, in the world. Uh, Seven one two two. Decimal eight. One two two eight. Cheers. Take care. Seven one two two. If we zoom in, look, we can see these planes, and they're fully animated as well. One of the big advances they made with the recent set of the CSL plug-in aircraft so is they all have animated parts. With information, we're Boeing 7 stand 537, information Lima, requesting our file clearance to Havana as filed. Uh, so we'll probably hear this guy asking for takeoff clearance in a moment. Can you please refile for the GASGU? That's it. I will refile with the GASGU, said uh, Speedbird 4 or Fox Truck. It's interesting, isn't it? So you can learn quite a lot just by Star sitting in the corner sorry, of the airfield. Sorry, 867 Sierra 11. Uh, sorry, 867 uh, Heather and Tower. Good afternoon, via Sierra 11. Remote zone on right, clear takeoff. That's in 170 degrees, 4 knots. So A867 has just got takeoff clearance. Qatari eight eight six seven. Here he comes. Look, he's going to start taxiing out onto the runway. Should we see how far we can zoom in on him? Yeah. There we go. Oh, X plane's being a pain. So yes, it's not perfect with the animations and the rendering of the aircraft, but it's good enough that you can see what's going on. Now it's worth pointing out that VATSIM clients are available. There's a, another client called vPilot that will work with FSX and P3D and Microsoft Flight Simulator because it uses the FS Connect DLL to do it. The XPilot one is obviously a very different animal because X-Plane doesn't use FS Connect. So should we watch him take off and then I'll end the video. So the main things here we were looking at is you need to install the XPilot client, but you also need to go and get the Bluebell CSL models and put them in the correct folder within the plugin folder for XPilot. He didn't stop either, did he, to do last checks? He pulled out and accelerated instantly. I guess he'd been sat waiting for quite some time. There you go. So he's on his way. So should we have a look? And we can see someone else is coming in that was just on the radio. So 082 is coming on runway 9 left. So he's on his way in. Should we watch the landing just before we stop recording see these people would have been handed off by approach if there is an approach operator working so let's go and have a look is there a EGLL North approach so if we go and tune so we're listening to approach name instead of tower. So we're going to watch his landing, see how good a job he does. He's playing silly buggers with going for a low landing rate. I wish people wouldn't do that. 
Anyway, you get the idea. So the major thing here is the X-Pilot client can inject all of the aircraft into X-Plane without using the AI aircraft. So it can have hundreds of them and not break a sweat. So there you go. X-Pilot in X-Plane, allowing you to have real air traffic control via VATSIM. So go and check out VATSIM.net if you've not done before and start reading and start playing. Okay, speak to you soon.